For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a custom and reusable dialog using JavaScript. I'll be sharing with you some CSS tricks and how to leverage the power of JavaScript constructor function for object-oriented programming. I have here a simple sample item I'll be using to demo everything about dialogues, and it is a simple div with a title and three buttons for three actions that trigger a dialog. On the CSS side, I have a simple body style to center everything, as you can see on the right panel with box size and border box for everything. Some style for H3 paragraph and input fields, which will be the things we're going to use later on. And finally, a simple style for the sample item. HTML5 actually comes with a dialog tag that with the attribute open, it will just pop up. As the time of this recording, it is not yet supported on Safari browsers. So I'll show you a more powerful alternative using JavaScript. I'll be using a constructor function for this, but you can use a class if you like, especially if you are using web components. This solution requires no code compiling and works on any browser. It takes content string, which will be an empty string by default, and options, which will be an empty object by default. Then I'll override the options with some defaults. Title will be dialog. And I'll also set allow click out to be true by default. Options can contain any configuration you will need for your dialog. So it's up to you really. Next, I'll create a div and give it a class of dialog. And for the inner HTML, I already have some content so you don't have to watch me type HTML. And it is a div with a dialog container class. And I'll conditionally render dialog header based on the title being truthy or not. And the provider title will go inside H3 tag. Then a dialog content div where I put the content HTML string passed. Finally, I have a div class of dialog footer where I render the submit button with the submit label when submit label option is not falsy. And a button for cancel with the provided label. The content of your dialog is up to you. So this inner HTML could contain anything as long as it is wrapped in a div. As any dialog, I'll give it a public method for open that simply appends the dialog to the document body and a close method where I simply remove the dialog from the DOM. Now let's instantiate this dialog with a very simple text and I'll just then call open to make it show up. Let's jump to the CSS to make it look like a dialog now. I'll position it fixed top left and make it fill the viewport with 100 view width and 100 view height. Then give it a semi-transparent black backdrop. Display flex so I can center the dialog container with justify content and the line item center. Now for the dialog container, I'll give it a white background, around this corner by five pixels, min width of 300 and max height of half of the viewport height and padding on the left and right only. And for the rest, I'll just paste the style and it's very simple. You style your dialog as you want, but mine is just simple enough for the things I need. The important part is to make the dialog content div overflow auto, so when the content is too big, it can scroll. On the footer, I display flex with justify content flex end to make the button stay on the right. Then make submit button black so it stands out as the main action. If I click on the cancel and submit buttons, nothing happens for now. So I'll query for both buttons and the dialog content div. And since the submit buttons is optional, I'll first check if it is there, then add a click event to it, where I call the close method to close the dialog. I will do the same thing for the cancel button as well. I'll also expose the HTML content through the public content property. Now, if I click on the cancel button, the dialog simply goes away. Another way to close this dialog is if I click outside on the backdrop. I'll check if the allow click outside option is true, and then I'll add a click event on the document, passing it private method called handle click out. What this function will do is check if the event target where the click happened is the dialog, then I'll simply call the close method. Now, inside the close method, I'll simply remove the document click event listener. Another cool dialog feature is to have listeners to know when the dialog closes. So I'll add a close public method that takes a callback and a set dialog event listener for custom event for dialog closed and passing the callback. 
I'll duplicate this for a cancel and a submit if you want to know precisely if the dialog was closed by any of the buttons click. So that means that when the close method is called, I'll dispatch a dialog close event. I'll dispatch a dialog submit event when the submit button is clicked and a dialog cancel event when the cancel button is clicked. I'll set an on close listeners that simply logs closed. When I close the dialog, I see the closed in the logs. I'll add an on cancel and on submit listener as well. And when I click cancel, I see the cancel followed by the close log. And when I click submit, I see the submit and close logs as well. Another cool thing to add is for when on submit, a data object is passed for cases where you want something out of the dialog. So on submit, I'll call the callback with data, which will be a simple data object. Because this is a private property, I'll have a method that takes a key and a value and set it on the data for when we extend the dialog. And when I click submit, we see the empty data object. Now let's extend this base dialog to create a dialog with different functionality and purposes. So I'll first query our sample item and its buttons with query select all and get the buttons out with a simple array destructuring. Now for the details button click, I'll just copy the base dialog inside the callback handler. I'll extend the content to be H3 tag with details and a paragraph with some random description. I'll remove the dialog header by setting the title to no and remove the submit button by setting the submit label to no as well. And for the cancel button, I'll set label to OK. Now when I click the details buttons, we see our headless dialog with the content I set. For the edit button, I'll create an input dialog that takes an initial value for the field and a default option with submit label of save. And to extend the dialog base, I'll call the apply on it, passing the this keyword. This here refers to the input dialog and apply takes an array of arguments for the function we are calling. In this case, the dialog base constructor function. This apply method pretty much runs the dialog base as input dialog, which means that all the methods and properties are set on the input dialog instead. This means I can treat input dialog just like I am inside the dialog base, accessing any public method and properties only. So for the content, I'll set an input field with the initial value passed and options. I'll access the content property where the input field will be placed and just query for the field. Then attach an input event on it where I call the update data method, passing value as key and the target value as the value. And for when the dialog is closed, I'll just clear the field value for cases where you may use the same instance of this dialog over and over. Now for when the edit button is clicked, I'll call the input dialog with the text of the item title, which is the first element, a paragraph. And for when this user clicks on the submit button, I'll take the data which will contain what we typed in the input field and use it to update the item title, aka the paragraph text. Now when I click on edit button, we see our dialog with the input field. I'll type something and click save to see the item title is now changed. For the final example, I'll create a confirm dialog which takes a description and the options with the default title of confirm. I'll extend the dialog base the same way with dialog base apply call. And this time I'll pass a paragraph tag with a description provided. And for the option, I'll set allow click out to false to force the user to confirm or cancel. Now, when the delete button is clicked, I'll instantiate the confirm dialog with simple question to confirm their action. On submit, I'll simply remove the item from the DOM. When I click delete button, we see our dialog. Clicking out does not close the dialog and clicking submit simply removes the item from the DOM. Like I said, the same thing can be written using JavaScript class. To give an example, I comment out the function and create classes instead. The input dialog simply extend dialog base instead of using apply. And inside it call super to pass the content and options and everything else is the same. Same thing for the confirm dialog as you can see here. It's just up to you which one to go with. For more videos like this, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.